All right, hold on, let me get this show. Uh, we're about to start the show. JC from KC asking for running late or tomorrow. It is today. The show is today. I just got to uh, tweet out some links and then we'll do this show. This Doug Gottlieb show. <laughs> we got amazing things. Um, all right. Hold on a second. Let me just. Set it out, and let me tweet this thing. Sorry, JC from KC and everyone else coming in. I might as well get into this thing. Let me tweet it out real quick. And do, do. Going live. Um... All right, here we go. <laughs> Why don't I just drop this? Just drop the ad reads. Why would I do that? All right. Here we go. The Bottom Line Bombs on the Sports Gaming Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, New York, Tennessee, Virginia from boosted same game parlays. The live in game odds. Bet $100, win $100, get $100. WinBet.com to download the WinBet app and start winning today. State restrictions apply. Bottom Line Bombs also brought to you by the Sports Gaming Podcast Final Four Watch Party. This Saturday, sweat out your bets. Win prizes with Ryan, Sean, and Colby over at youtube.com backslash sports gambling podcast. Plus, make sure to fill out the listener survey for a chance to win a $100 SGPN gift card. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com survey. And with that, let's do this. Yeah, welcome. Guy that pulled out the sheets of paper, that looked at the analytics, that watched the tape in the freaking when we were at Indianapolis. <laughs> That's me, the, the analytics guy, the paper and the passion. I'm the guy. I miss that Ron Rivera soundbite. Now that I got Colby's soundboard here. Let me hear Ron Rivera again. I'm the guy that pulled out the sheets of paper, that looked at the analytics, that watched the tape in the freaking when we were at Indianapolis. That's me. If you're looking at if you're watching on YouTube like JC from KC is, let's go. I bring the paper detonating them bombs. It's hilarious. Um, welcome to the Bottom Line Bombs. I am CJ Sullivan, the man in the box. Uh, got a great show for you today. We got a final four picks today. I got a final. I'll give out my final four bombs. Recap some men. I got I have one more NIT bomb as well. And I got a man in the box segment towards the end. Got a few other stories I want to talk about. Want. College basketball related media. I'll do a little ESPN uh, hating as I always do. Fresh off my eight and no sweet 16 picks. Went one and one with NIT last night. Was it last night? Yeah. Right. It was last night. God, things are getting away from me. Um, we had North Texas who had to come back versus Wisconsin. They didn't have to come back versus Wisconsin. They just had to Wisconsin come back to them. That's how they did. That's how they did that. Wisconsin was hilarious, dude. They scored 52 points like at halftime and finished with 54. When are they ever going to change how they it's play basketball at Wisconsin? It's borderline racist at this point, the way that their system. I mean, this is crazy. White's doing six passes of possession. My God. And then we lost, even though UAB won, we were laying three. There were some shenanigans at the end. They only won by two, including a missed free throw. But what are you going to do? So we went one and one with the NIT. Went one and one before with the NIT. And one and one before. So now we are three and three NIT. Eight and no. Oh with the NCAAs for the new rendition of Bottom Line Bombs, making me 13-3. Not too bad. Pretty amazing, actually. Uh, but welcome. Come on in. Uh, glad you're joining us, especially live. I got to get this show done in a hurry. Um, but big Final Four show. I got, I got all these papers I have to go through. I just did the XFL show, so I'm trying to uh, get my thing into uh, what's going on here. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. 
I do know what I'm doing. I'm talking to you guys. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're fresh off. There's a brand new after the NFL season. Now of our own feed. Subscribe. Do the whole thing. I got sound effects. We're going to give out things. You give out things. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, let's get right into the March Madness. I don't have time to waste with the show. People who don't like this Final Four, I talked about it last time. Show people were like, I hate this Final Four. It's not good for basketball. Too many up. Now it's too many episodes, which is so funny. They like Cinderella teams, but the, speaking of racist, they, they like Cinderella teams, but they want their Cinderella teams white. They don't want them to be a Florida Atlantic. They want them to be like Fairleigh Dickinson and, you know, and uh, Butler. They want Gordon Haywards and their pomade and Hoosiers and Jimmy Chitwoods. I don't like this Florida Atlantic team. What is this? What kind of Cinderella team is this? They're from Haiti. I don't understand what the Florida I love that Florida Atlantic team. I don't say what they are. I don't know if it's a real school. They, they assembled a warehouse down there or something. But I like it. I saw this question. Uh, these gamers say, should I even do a bracket anymore? Why do I even do a bracket? It's, it's pointless. I mean, really, yeah, you're always wasting money with, point, with brackets. But that's the point of it. It's, it. The point's not to win it. No one wins a bracket. It's like the lottery or Mega Millions. You're not buying a ticket to win. You're buying the ticket to hope you can win. You're, you're buying a dream. That's how enslaved to work we are nowadays. <laughs> we can't even dream for free. We just like go to 7 Eleven, like <laughs> liquor store. Here's $2. Just tell me there's something out there. I just want to dream for a night about a mega million jackpot. You know, you're not going to win it. But for a night, you got to envision a life if they did win half a billion dollars. If you did, if you did have Arizona shipping at all, of course the bracket gets busted. But yeah, of course you still do a bracket, is what I'm trying to say. Because what else are you going to do during that week? That those three days in between Sunday selection and Thursday, you have to have the brackets. Everything's in bracket formation. Even though, as gamblers, we know uh, that trying to hit a sixty-three team money line parlay might not be the wisest bet. But gambling and brackets are separate, so why not? You got to do it. I say. Um, but anyway, like I said, these final four, people who don't like the final four, like complaining about like they want the blue bloods of Kentucky and Kansas. They don't even know anyone on the team anyway. They just know Kansas and Kentucky. Maybe you know a coach. That's why they complain about it. Because they don't court, yeah, you don't know these players. You don't I guarantee you don't know the other players either. Those old Kentucky teams are gone of like Ron Mercer and Antoine Walker. Now you just want crying fans. There's nothing. Yeah, that's the only reason why I would have wanted Texas to win. One would be a better game versus UConn, but I want to see Texas fans crying in a higher stage. There's Texas crying fans are the best crying, or some of the best crying fans. Um, another complaint I heard about this March. First of all, this March Madness tour tournament's been great. A lot of great games. No buzzer beaters, but that's fine because they changed the rules on that with the way they stopped the clock and put fractions of a second. We also hear, well, now that Someone had a take on Twitter. It was a pretty big name, too. I shouldn't just say it like it's a straw man. Well, the tournament makes the regular season obsolete. Why should we just put it in? Yeah, we know. Right. We get it. It's also the most exciting thing in sports. Every playoffs make the regular season obsolete if you want to do it like that. No, play, no playoffs equal, you know, what a regular season is. Um. Baseball, they say if you want a, a baseball series to be the true uh, playoffs, it has to be like a best of 29 or something shit like that. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, you're right. Any team can win in the, in the tournament, but it's the tournament. It's the only thing we care about. <laughs> Welcome, Erica Costa, to the chat. Who said he was strolling around the internet. He heard Ron Mercer's name was mentioned. I know that's the last time I knew someone in college basketball as well even though we did go eight and nine. Those Kentucky teams were the best. Ron Mercer's, your Derek Anderson's, Antoine Walker and his meaty threes. Chicago Bull, Ron Mercer. Those Bulls had all those guys at one point. Shout out to the Bulls and Eric Acosta, who is uh, from Chicago. I know know him from Chicago as they are turning it on to be the hottest team in the playing tournament. Great. Wait, good timing, fellas. 
you're going to really do some damage in that playing tournament. What a joke that NBA playoff system is. They, they put in that playing tournament for a COVID and they're like, ah, let's just keep it. Everybody get in, right? Just in case there's some stars that don't get in. 10 out of 15 in each conference, 20 playoff teams. Anyway. They got a big game versus the Lakers tonight. Not going to give it up that big a revenge game. LeBron James back because he saw the LeBron James of feet. This is what he said. Look at me going off off topic already. That's, I'm the one who brought myself off topic with Ron Mercer. Um, the LeBron James of feet, which means what? He uh, he also whines for calls and <laughs> and is delusional and is surrounded by a yes men. Is that, is that what you want? A podiatrist who's surrounded by yes men? Who wants to uh, coin phrases like Taco Tuesday? Anyway, um, welcome to this is it. The bottom line bombs. Like I said, we got a final four uh, bombs. I'll do real quick. Well, not real quick. I'll break down four games, give out some plays. And the NIT championship game, which is the Conference USA uh, battle, which was predicted here on the bombs. Just didn't get that minus three cover from UAB. And then I'm going to talk some ESPN, uh, some funny stuff that happened over there in the last couple of days, and some Doug Gottlieb, which I can't wait to get to. It's a 10-year anniversary of one of my favorite moments of March Madness, which I hope which I hope would make the uh, one shining moment. There should be oh, – well, there will be gaming covers. Anyway, let me get to a quick ad read, and then uh, we'll get back. We'll come back. With my final four breakdown, we got to get right into it. I'm not speeding through the show, but I need to be more efficient as I'm talking about the Bulls and Lakers. Uh, (laughs) So I will tell you about WinBet, which is the official online sports book of the Sports Gaming Podcast Network. It's now active in Massachusetts and tons of other states. March Madness is here, so many ways to bet on the big dance. Sign up today to receive a special offer. Bet $100, get $100. Limit state availability for our DGENs only. If you hit the biggest long shot parlay of the week, you get $1,000 free credit. So I want you to choose from... All you have to do is head over to WinBet, download the WinBet app. Offer is subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older present in the state where a playthrough WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and you do, it's you listening to this show. You have the gambling problem. But not all problems need fixed. So call 1-800-522-4700. Report someone else. It's always fun. Report your bookie. Begging you for money. Also, the SGP Masters, if you're looking to hang out with Sean and Ryan Stadium Swim and watch the biggest golf tournament in the world, you can win a three-night stay at Circle Las Vegas to hang with the guys. Completely free contest. Enter, just go to sportsgamingpodcast.com backslash golf party. Golf party. Well, that sounds fun, huh? <laughs> hang with Sean and Ryan in Vegas for a golf party. Oh, boy. If you don't win the contest, you can still get a discount on a room using promo code SGP15. And remember, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And that'll that'll stay in Vegas because that story sounds so boring that no one's going to want to hear it. <laughs> That's a little joke. That's a little preview for a promo video I'm going to make for the network for that contest. Uh, also, they have a Final Four watch party. That's where the contest winner is going to be now pulled, I believe. Final Four watch party is going virtual. So hang out with the guys on their YouTube channel for the entire Saturday Final Four action. Live bets, prize giveaways, and much more. Subscribe on YouTube. Dot com sports gambling podcast and tune in on Saturday. That is that. I got one more and um, hmm, that's it. One more after that, and then we're good. Let's see where we're at. All right, 12 minutes. So let's break down the games. I kind of want to get into the Doug Gottlieb thing just because it's so fun, but no, we do have to break down some of the games here. Um, Start off the first game, San Diego State versus FAU. This is all in Houston, right? The Final Four, if I'm, am I right about that? Yes, it is. In the Joel Osteen Dome. That's always a big thing with the Final Four. It's always in a huge 80,000-person dome where basketball is not supposed to be played, and they always say the sight lines, perspectives are wrong, and no one can shoot. So that's fun, but as long as everyone's making money. Not the college kids, but as long as the NCAA is making money and they make their annual billion dollars in the next three weeks. Uh, the Joel Osteen Dome in Houston. That's a joke, of course. He, uh, he, he has a famous church in Houston where he refused to let 
uh, hurricane victims come in how when they were houses were written flooding Houston floods whatever and the houses were washed ashore and he said absolutely not get these filthy people away from my church which I get it Joel P. Joel <laughs> Joel Joel worked very hard to steal all that money from desperate people why would he want filthy filthy commoners who were destroyed by a god obviously. Didn't like these people. He, he, or, or God would have built him a better house. If God wanted you to stay in his, in his church, he would have built you a better house and gave you more money to steal from desperate elderly people. Anyway, so that's where the final four games we played. Joel, Joel Ostin will let these people in because they're sponsors. And first we got San Diego State versus Florida Atlantic. This is the line of San Diego State minus two, totals 131. Um, like I said, this game, I kind of I love this game. San Diego State, they, this is just gonna be a prison game. San Diego State is not good at basketball. That's why I love them. They're hilarious. They are, I mean, they play defense. They lift a lot of weights. They they refuse to score the basketball. They hate it. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just amazing. They just throw it against the glass and sees what happened, and they punch it like a rugby team. But they beat everyone. They hold everyone with six. They haven't let up the six team that score 65 points in all of March. Matt Bradley was their best player all year. He just he he is openly saying he does just not want to play. I do not want to play in any game. I mean, I'll keep going. If we keep winning, I'll keep I'll I'll make the trip. But yeah, I'm done playing basketball, or at least scoring. He's shooting 10% from three points. <laughs> 31 percent. I mean, I laugh because he's good. He's an actually good player, but he just for some reason he doesn't want to play. Darren Trammell is wasn't terrible during the year. Four five points a game. Now he's scoring 15 points a game. He's the one who got the free throw to win the game versus Creighton. Controversial call. I didn't like it because I had Creighton money line, but I also see why the ref called it. Not because it's the letter of the law. He should have let it go. Because who gives a shit about the people who love the letter? The letter of the law says there's a fa- who gives a fuck about the letter of the law? How about we enjoy the ending of a game? Or wh- when do we all become hall monitors and a bunch of carrots? The same thing with the Super Bowl. It was a holding. It, it, technically, it was a penalty. Who cares what it technically is? We want to enjoy this experience. Good God. Didn't you get that narrative where there's supposed to be a fun ending to this either way? Not the ref with a ticky tack call. But I do understand why the ref made that call because that game was so terrible. It needed put it out of its misery. So I get it. The ref's like, yeah, we're not watching five more minutes. We're not watching an, an overtime of you two throwing the ball across the rim like this. They want to combine five for 30. From three point line, uh, dear Lord, enough is enough. Oh man! So they play great defense, San Diego State, and they're slow. I think there's a pace is like 266. I think I read that stat somewhere. Um, Florida Atlantic's not much faster. They're 160th. So you have to like the under of 131. I'll give that out real quick. Under 131. That's got to be the play of this game. But not my official bomb. Um, like I said about Florida Atlantic, they are the they are the uh, Cinderella team that nobody America doesn't want because we're racist. We want our Cinderella team white. That's what fits our narrative. We want Hoosiers. We want your Jimmy Chitwoods. We want Fairleigh Dickinson. We want Butlers. We want Gordon Haywards. Who is this Florida? What is going? What island is this Florida Atlantic team from? We don't want them looking like actual basketball players out there. Who knows what is going on in Florida Atlantic? I mean, it can't be a real school. Like I said, I think it's like it's just some fucking warehouse or some port down there. They have these model cheerleaders on Instagram who are smoking hot. They have these crazy players. They got a rush. They got a seven foot Russian. What the fuck? How do you get a Russian down there on the coast of Florida? What's his name? Vladislav Golden. He's awesome. <laughs> the fucking, I mean, the whole thing is like an 80s, uh, it's like a Miami Vice episode to squat. They're all the Miami Vice villains. They're all, they're all cast off of old drug dealers, but I love, I love Florida Atlantic. I would like to take them here. 
But the problem is, I think there. Another thing with the Florida Atlantic, they keep reminding me of how Memphis should be here because I had Memphis to win the championship like, like ninety to one, and Memphis had the ball up one first round against these guys with eight seconds to go. They didn't grab him a timeout. And I just and I just assume Memphis would a cakewalk to the final. But they'd be exactly here where Florida Atlantic is. That's not always the case. But I like Florida Atlantic. They're a great team. They're like 35 and 3. But the problem is they're good at basketball. Conference USA in general is amazing. They they're like 19 and 1. The fact that they only had one team get a tournament is crazy. Um so San Diego State, not good at basketball. But they make they're good at playing uh, their rugby prison style, just absolutely injure people. Defense, and nobody likes to play against guys like that. That's the thing, and that's how they've been winning. Alabama, fuck off. Alabama was amazing. San Diego State just didn't. <laughs> San Diego State is like, well, I'm just gonna beat the shit out of you. How about that? They're like the Broad Street Bullies of basketball, but they're like uh, not even that turbo. Who's that one? Uh, Whatever. I don't even know. I don't even know my movie references anymore. Um, anyway, we're going to give out uh, because I, I just, it was another thing about San Diego State. People are calling them a team of Desi. They're making up because they were amazing during COVID. Then it got shut down and blah, blah, blah. They're like the fifth best San Diego State team that all choked. So I think that's what they realized. We got to have a team that's worse. Our problem is we'll have our scheme, but they're too good. Those guys always choke in a tournament. Let's have guys that aren't good. So they don't know where they should be, and then they'll make a run. So like it or not, I want Florida Atlantic to win, but we're going to give out San Diego State minus two as our bomb. Detonate it, bomb it, Aztecs. And the under, by the way. We already gave that out. So under 131 and San Diego State minus two. So that's two bombs. Now, remember, my NCAA bombs are 8-0. No. So I'm putting my undefeated record on the line here. My NIT bombs are 3-3. Three and three. So I'm 13-3 and three total, right? No, that's not how that works. 11-3. and three. That's right. <laughs> that's, not how ma- that's not how mathing works. Uh, thank you, everybody, who's also on the show and in the chat. Um, next game, Miami-UConn. Boy, we're getting through this. We're going to get through these bombs. Usually I save my bombs towards the end. Now I'm going to put them right in the middle just to see what happens. Miami UConn that lines five and a half going up towards six. Uh, 149 is the total in this one. The opposite of the first game. This is the night game, and this is going to be a fast-paced game. It's going to be up and down. I love the over in this game as well. I'm not as well because I like the under in San Diego State, and I love the over in this game. This this one I think. Uh, because a lot is said about the domes and not being able to shoot in perspective, but also it's kind of a misnomer. I think like the last eight Final Four games have all gone over. So I don't think shooting is going to be a problem. UConn looks like a machine. UConn is just destroying teams. That's why uh, Miami's been playing. Miami's been on a run just through their coach. Everyone just gives credit. <laughs> no one gives any credit to fucking Miami play. I mean, their guards are great. They got Nigel Pack, Wooga Pop Player, Jordan Miller, of course, who hasn't missed, I think, all March. UConn's amazing. Jordan Hawkins is a superstar. They're, they're uh, the Noah's Ark. They got two of everything. They're Raisin Brand, two scoops. So UConn is just blowing out teams. They got Bill Murray out there now. I guess his kid goes to UConn. How old is Bill Murray? Bill Murray's like 75. I love these actors and performers have like their kids when they're in their 60s. What? Because they're very narcissistic, they don't wait to have kids until later on. But you know, everyone loves Bill Murray. Although he's been getting, he's been, he's been taking some hits lately. Bill Murray, you can, that proves no matter who you are. Although it makes sense, of course he's an asshole. I like it though. Nothing wrong with that. Um, anyway, Bill Murray's out there, so he doesn't have the same thing as him rooting for the Cubs. You're like, oh, Bill Murray goes to you likes UConn now, and um, I guess he does. So their coach, Danny Hurley, is going against uh, Miami's coach, Laganita, or Laganita, who is awesome. We brought George Mason to the Final Four, and I brought this horrible Miami team to the Final Four. Although I do like how this Miami team is an s- insult and slap in the face to college athletics. They, they are 
all bought. They're all NIL. They're all transfer portal. And they're all like open cash. Like this is the best team money could buy, which I love. Fort Atlantic is kind con- they kind of get like your outcast transfer portals. They're all third year sophomores, which means uh, legal issues. <laughs> They're the props. Uh, Miami's the option. Miami's like, we're just going to buy your players. And but J Mark, welcome to the, welcome to the chat. I know this guy. That's right. J Mark of the XFL show. Who's co-hosted with him. Make sure you subscribe to the XFL gambling podcast. We just did a show. I can get into that later, but um, let me, let me wrap up this Miami Yukon analysis. And Danny Hurley used to be a guy I wanted to fade as a coach and you know, got as a kid who grew up in South Jersey. Philadelphia. We used to play St. Anthony's, who is the, the god of St. Anthony High School growing up was the god of Jersey basketball. Bobby Hurley Sr. coached there. He's the greatest high school basketball coach of all time. And his son, Bobby Hurley and Danny Hurley. Bobby Hurley with the Duke. Danny Hurley went to Seton Hall. Danny Hurley was the younger brother of the fucking pip squeak. We have everyone's a chant. We know you're no Bobby. He became an alcoholic. He needed like personal growth. He kind of went away from basketball. He was just wasn't wasn't as good as Bobby Hurley, which is understandable. And he got it burned out. You know, he's because his dad's an asshole. I'm sorry. He's a hard nosed coach. And a horrible father. I mean, he's a uh, disciplinarian. That's what I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I keep getting those terms wrong. Um, and that creates assholes. <laughs> and they love, they love God with the stories with Danny Hurley growing up. And it, uh, he's on the front stoops of the White Eagle Hall, the bingo parlor at St. Anthony's. They play stickball on the stoop. Oh, the Jersey City stories. Jersey, everybody's tough. The mom's tough. Every the dog, the cats are tough. The stick hit the rats are tough. Jersey tough. My God. Playing stickball and throwing bricks at buses of black kids when they would come through your neighborhood. All those all those Italian uh nostalgia stuff like in gangster movies is, is all deeply suited racism as well. Yeah. We were just on the stoop, a kid from Brooklyn, playing handball, burning, <laughs> burning school buses that didn't have whites in it. Anyway, so uh, this is obviously Danny Hurley's redemption uh, tour is where he's going to make a mark for himself with all the Hurleys and Bill Murray's. And uh, they look amazing. They look unstoppable and they kind of are. But. Five and a half, six points. It's uh, it's a lot of points for Miami with these guards. They can beat them with these guards. UConn, they look incredible. It's hard. It's hard to make a case against UConn, but I will. A lot of it's uh, just that voice of saying a kid from Brooklyn. But no, I believe he's Miami guard. I mean, in Leganese is such a great coach. I think he's such a better coach than Hurley. Even that opening game where they should have lost to Drake. I think that was a coaching move by him. He's like, listen, every great team that goes on a run or on any team that goes on a great run has a horrible scare that first round, just like Florida Atlantic. And they shouldn't have won. And then they go on a run. So he purposefully had his team lose for 55 minutes and then they went on 18 one run to beat Drake. And they haven't looked back since. And they've beaten great teams, including Texas. That was a, that was a shocker when they beat Texas, to be honest with you. They were down 13. They didn't even hit any threes, and they still came back from them. A horrible call, that box out call. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's a ref. That's all, that's all college basketball. There's just refs and whistles. God damn it. Do these refs love calling charges in college basketball? Oh, what a show they put on. A hop skip. I mean, that seems racist, too. Anytime, anytime a ref calls a charge, it's definitely racist. This is an all racist show. <laughs> it actually is when I get to the Doug Gottlieb thing afterwards. Uh, anyway, so let, let me let me give out these let me give out these pictures with this. Uh, well, yeah, because I don't want to break down the NIT. Then I'm going to get to it, and I want to wrap this show uh, up pretty quickly. I can't. I, I got to stop telling the audience that I want to wrap this up quickly, and I'm forcing on you. But we do have a show after this, and I do got to cut some promos. Um, but let me give out Miami. Plus five and a half. Bomb it. Correlate that parlay. Over 149. Detonate it. 
All right. So that's four bombs I've given out for your final four. How about that? Two totals, two sides. That's San Diego State minus two and under 131. And Miami plus five and a half over 149. Miami's a scary play just because how good look UConn knows. And now my bonus, bonus bomb is on the NIT championship game, which is tomorrow, right? Thursday night in Vegas. They moved it. It used to be in Madison Square Garden, the NIT final champ final four. Now it's in Vegas. I think because that's where you got to go for Times Square now. Times Square, if you haven't been to New York recently, is back to being 70s Times Square, but without the sex. There's no prostitutes and uh, pimps anymore. It's just all drugs and danger and barely an M&M store. Everyone, like, uh, it, it really, I mean, say what you want about Giuliani, but he did, he cleaned it up for the family. It needs another Giuliani in that Times Square. It's all, it's, it's back to being horrible again. So, I, with that being said, they're like, let's get this to Vegas, and there's nothing more pure and clean than Las Vegas. Am I right, NIT guys? So now we have the Conference USA matchup, UAB versus North Texas Green Machine. The line is one and a half. UAB favorite. I thought it was going to be a four and a half. I was on a college basketball experience, college experience show last night with Colby D and Moneyline Mac. Shout out to them. Give them a, give them a subscription. You probably already do if you're listening to this. They're a big show. Great guys. I also do the XFL show with Colby D and J Mark, who's in the chat room. You definitely got to subscribe to that, the XFL podcast. That that's that's a fun podcast. Just because the XFL is hilarious. As I get diverted, the XFL. All right, I'll, I'll talk. To, I'll talk about it for a second here. Ah, I got time before I get. I'll to detonate my NIT mom just just yet. <laughs> See how I am? See how my mind and, and stream of consciousness goes? I think of one thing, I just go off. I, there's no pattern. I do have some kind of uh, paper and passion here. But where's Ron Rivera? Oh, now I got I got two soundboards ahead of me. I kind of want to just try them on. What's Dan? What's Dan Marino? Dan wife? Marino and his uh, really dynamic wife. <laughs> That's a great one. Um FIU Airport. I don't even get that one. I don't get that one. But anyway, um, so yeah, the XFL pocket just real quick. Of why I love it, I give out. We give out picks. Me, J Mark, and Kobe and DFS the whole thing and recap games. I like the XFL. By the way, it's 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 it's, it's a good brand. It's fun. It really is. Don't poop pill it. Um. Speaking of Eric Acosta, he was over my place. A couple people were over my place. I was showing a game uh, or a fight or something or whatever with my illegal TV system that the Gambling Podcast Network set me up with that I paid with in Bitcoin. Um, and then, like, in between games or fights, I would switch over to the XFL game. Like, what is this? But they started watching. It was fun. So Josh Gordon flying around. Like, oh, I'm a real Ben DiNucci. Anyway, um, point is, what's fun about this league is uh, usually in uh, other leagues, Coaches get fired if you don't perform, blah, blah, blah. Someone has to answer, but the players have too much power. Here, the players have no power, and they get fired. They get fired middle of the week and then rehired. They just prove a point. All these coaches are terrible, but they stay. The coaches have power because they're the names. It's like Rod Woodson and Heinz Ward, Terrell Buckley. They're called names. They're not good coaches, but they're names. So they don't get fired, but the players do. Quarterbacks are getting traded and fired. It's amazing. Referees have more power and you're all mic'd up. They're like, I'll kick you out. I can do it. I can do whatever I want. I make more money than you. What, what kind of league where the referees make more money than the players? Anyway, so we give out our picks on Wednesday. And by the time Saturday comes around, the news has changed drastically with a lot of these rosters. Like, yeah, we, <laughs> we dropped 10 of our players, signed 10 more and, and changed our entire offensive scheme. And we relocated cities. Like what? Well, that's not the team I bet on. Anyway, give it a follow. XFL Gambling Podcast. Um, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. The NIT Championship Conference USA. They're like 18 and 1 throughout the postseason. They only got one team in, and that's Florida Atlantic, who's in the Final Four. UAB, who's playing uh, in the championship game versus Mean Green, North Texas Machine, they were just favorite versus Florida Atlantic three weeks ago in their conference championship game with old Jelly Roll. Uh, or jelly bean or jelly something, jelly roll. Um, uh, 
They're a favorite. They lost, but so that shows you how good they are. They're good. So is North Texas. These guys have played three times this year. This will be the fourth time they've played. Kind of reminds me of that 85 Nova Georgetown, you know, where Villanova wasn't afraid of Georgetown because they played each other four times. So this total gets down like 128 or something, which is pretty low for UAB. But North, that's how North Texas plays. I like to grind it out. But because they're familiar with each other is why we're getting such a short number. And Jelly Roll in his final game in Las Vegas, he's gonna he's going down with the ship. So I don't think the number should be a, a factor. So I think it's a good number. And you, they just destroyed North Texas in the conference tournament. So maybe there's a revenge angle. But fuck the revenge angle. It's for the NIT championship. That's why I'm not, not buying into that. Um, I thought this line was going to be a bit higher. So I'm going to give out my, uh, a bonus NIT championship game for Thursday. That's UAB minus one and a half. Bomb it. All right. Quick rad read. And I'm going to come right back with my Doug Gottlieb and ESPN segment and a man in the box. And then we'll get out of here. We'll get out of here. I'm acting like we're all leaving together. Underdog fantasy. We're all that's what we're brought to you by. Underdog fantasy. It continues to march madness college pick'em. It's a great way to get in on the action, especially if your bracket is busted. And whose bracket's not busted? The whole point of your bracket is to get it busted. I like getting mine busted early. I was Arizona champion. Good. Get it out of the way so I don't have to worry about this shit anymore. I think it's bet on games. It has your favorite college basketball player props, great NBA and NHL daily games. Head on over to underdogfantasy.com. Use promo code SGPN for 100% deposit bonus up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. Thank you for watching on li live on YouTube, by the way, everyone who is doing it. Make sure to smoosh that subscribe button. Like this video on YouTube, too. Don't just watch it. Like it. You have to like it. That's how these fucking algorithms work. Uh, Kitch, welcome to the uh, welcome to the <laughs> chat with the bomb emoji. How great, how fun are those bomb emojis to do, right? I might, I mean, it's addicting. I get it. JC from KC has a few in there, they're fun. I did it in uh, when I made a video, a promo video, my tout video for my eight and no sweet 16 picks, and you put in bomb for the captions, and the, the, the emoji comes up. How you can't do it's it's great. Putting emojis for the captions is even more fun. The bomb detonation. Uh, side note, the reason why it took a little while for my to get my own feed here for these bottom line bombs, the word bombs, I guess, is a uh, tr trigger. It's, it's not just something you can't say at an airport. Apparently, you can't say it at iTunes either. They had, to, they had to review my whole show to make sure I wasn't, I don't know, teaching people how to make bombs. What the fuck? They, the only bombs I'm doing is to your bookies back account. And by your bookie, I mean your uh, online account, probably, DraftKings. Anyway, let's get into uh, a few fun stories, then I'll do a man in a box. Welcome back. Um, it's NCAA time. Let me get the clock up. Obviously, we're wrapping up. This is the final weekend of March Madness. I always love the TV coverage of March Madness. Um where they mix in the NBA guys and the NCAA. They never, they never know how to do it. CBS really, you know, They're like they love Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith so much. So they bring them over. Like just, we don't care if you never watch college basketball, just, uh, you know, make jokes, do whatever. So then you got, then you got like Clark Kellogg who knows the deal. And Greg Anthony knows the deal. Um, so they have to intertwine again. You know, those guys are the money guys. Uh, 10 years ago, to the day. This is the anniversary, I think it was the other day of it. Was my favorite moment during this thing. And that is when uh Doug Gottlieb, who does a radio show, who's an old old point guard for Notre Dame and then Oklahoma State. And then he got caught like stealing credit cards or something. He does a radio show. I don't I actually don't mind Doug Gottlieb. Um but <laughs> he had one of my favorite things in uh broadcast history. Oh, this is 10 years ago. He did a uh, he he was on a panel with the CBS panel. It was him, G Greg Gumble, Greg Anthony, Barkley, and Kenny Smith. He was the only white guy on there. Uh, that's how I set up this clip, and you understand why that's important. And this is how he handled his first day on the job with this sweet sixteen ten years ago. Hey, 
Doug Gottlieb, Kenny the Jet Smith, Sir Charles Barkley. Welcome back to New York, guys, and um, it's going to be a good night. I think we're going to have four terrific games tonight. I, I really do think that they're going to be pretty evenly matched as it should be for Sweet 16. Cream rising to the crop. I don't know why you guys asked me. I'm just here to bring diversity to this set here. Give the kind of white man's perspective on things. Okay. Point guard position. No, no. <laughs> Okay, just checking. <laughs> Marquette, Miami. How about you guys? No, I'm just uh, checking, man. I'm just checking. You, uh, you you jump right into it. You swimming hard. Okay. Swimming hard. I'm, <laughs> upstream, I might ask. Trust me, we'll get you back before All the end right, of the night. So, I, I, for me, <laughs> you know, it could be a lot of firsts for Miami. <laughs> uh, I love it so much because it's such a bomb of a joke, and it's a bad bomb. Bring the white man's perspective. He just did an interview about it recently. The reason I talk about it because it just came up that he did an interview about it. And even today, he's like, someone should have stopped me. Some producers, I, should, I ran it by and they should have stopped me. Someone should have said it's a bad idea. How about you, Doug? And I get it. You have new material. You want to say it up front. That's an old comic mis That's an old comic mistake right there. When you have new material, you get excited for it. So you want to say it up top during your set, but you, but you shouldn't. You have to you put in three old jokes and then layer your new one at like number four, just so you know, you got a good rhythm, you know, and you can judge it honestly because you're not going to tell it right. And he didn't tell it right. You can see him looking at it around. I mean, I'm just here to bring diversity to this set here. Give the kind of white man's perspective on things sure. of point guard position. No. <laughs> on things of point guard position. No, no. Hmm? Looking around now. And they're just <laughs> black men staring at him now. No, am I getting fired? White man's perspective. He talked, and then he, what was his quotes about it? So his quotes about it, he's so funny. He goes, um, let, me get, let me pull it out. <laughs> he goes, I didn't need to crack a joke when I'm naturally pretty humorous. Yeah, you, you're fucking hilarious, Doug. You're pretty humorous. First of all, he talks about the story. He goes, yeah, my friend said it. And afterwards, I got a laugh, so I thought I'd use it. So you're not naturally pretty humorous. You, you stole your racism. He throws his racist joke off on his friend, but yet claims he stole it, too. I like how that's... They don't even understand how that makes him look. It's so funny. Hey, it wasn't my joke, so don't you can't blame that on me. I just stole it and used it as mine. If it went well, I would have said it was my joke. I mean, I'm just here to bring diversity to this set here. Give the kind of white man's perspective on things. Sure. Point guard position. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. It starts off with, uh, I think Greg, Kenny Smith, I believe says, I, I'm going to have to do the whole top again. I got to do that again. It's, it's, it's so funny. Cause he, I think it even, he runs down different versions of it. Like I should have said, to I'm the token white guy. That would have been acceptable. It's a funnier, it's a funnier punch. You can't say I'm giving the white man's perspective. That's a bad delivery. And then I remember that night, people did attack him on Twitter. And like Barkley had to, you know, stomp out the flames. Like, don't worry, we're not offended. So everyone get a life, you know? Yeah, we know you're not offended, Barkley. That's not the problem. <laughs> What's the problem here? <laughs> okay, one more from one more from the top. Because this is, I mean, one of my favorite moments I've ever heard. I love, I love a if you can see it too, look it up on YouTube. Doug Gottlieb, white, white joke, awkward white joke. He he's center. He's dead center in the desk and he's looking left and right. And he's got that face, like the Eddie Haskell face, like that. You just want to punch No, Huh? Then he goes, what's wrong with you guys? What's wrong with us? You're going to get fired before the fucking first commercial break. Hey, Doug Gottlieb, Kenny, the jet Smith, sir, Charles Barkley. Welcome back to New York guys. And um, it's going to be a good night. I think we're going to have four terrific games tonight. I, I really do think that they're going to be pretty evenly matched as it should be for Sweet 16. Cream rising to the crop. I don't know why you guys asked me. I'm just here to bring diversity to this set here. Give the kind of white man's perspective on things. Sure. Point guard position. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> Marquette, Miami. How about you guys? No, I'm just checking, man. I'm just checking. You, uh, you, you jump right into it. What's wrong with you guys? That was Greg Anthony, a cause who says, okay. All right. That's what you went with? Cream rises to the top. I love how he had to throw his line on. Yep, cream rises to the top. Anyway, well, I don't know why you're asking me. I'm just uh, here to bring. He combined two different jokes into one. Like, I'm bringing diversity to the crop. Like, you could tell his friend told him that. You're here to bring diversity. 
than the white man's perspective, which uh, you have to choose one or the other. You can't just cr crowbar both of them in there. Just as a comic, I'm giving you advice, Doug Gottlieb. If, you, if you're obviously not going to be allowed back on there. But... <laughs> Oh, man. I got to do more media jokes. U.S. Um, not media. Sports media jokes. I do love those doing that. And then we'll do. Oh, man. I mean, I'm just here to bring diversity to the set here. Give the kind of white man's perspective on things. Sure. Point guard position. No. On things of point guard position. No, I love that. You, I get it. When you want to crawl into a hole when your joke pops like that. <laughs> All right, let's get into We'll go to a man in the box in a second. The other, the other thing before we give out the basketball and other sports, NFL, of course, creeping back in. I'll get into the draft after the March Madness stuff. It's too much. I, the, the, the draft is such a young man's – it's a young man's game. I used to be really into the draft, but, like, it's – at this point – I usually just wait, wait to what, what happens. I'll look at them afterwards. The, the, when you get too much into the mock drafts, nobody knows these fucking. The teams don't know. This is why I lost faith. If this year doesn't tell you to lose faith in the NFL draft. Look at the Niners. They traded up all their picks to move up to get Trey Lance, number three overall, and he's a bust. And yet, they took Brock Purdy with the last pick of the draft. They had no clue what he was going to be. And he's their best quarterback. So no, nobody knows shit. Anyway, but that doesn't stop ESPN from having a, a thousand mock drafts nonstop. And I don't, I can't watch the mock draft. I can't do it. They had an entire mock draft of the NFL on ESPN. And I only just saw this clip. It was, uh, it, it, it was that same look, but this is Mike Tenenbaum. Who's a former jets general manager. So he's just one of the talking heads on ESPN. So they had a mock draft. He doesn't know anything about the, you know, how does shit work? I mean, he does, but. And he picked uh, Tennessee quarterback Hendon Hooker with the fifth overall pick, okay, for this ESPN mock draft. And then Mel Kuyper rips on it. He's like, he's 26 years old. He's coming off a torn ACL. If that happens at number five, that'll be the biggest shocker in the history of the NFL draft. He's ripping on it. And Tenenbaum, they show Tenenbaum, and he's looking at it like, I'm all right. The fuck they told me to say this why, why are you ripping on me like this I don't know it's an it's a TV show these are people players these are players people heard of a quarterback okay I don't yes no one's going to take him there but stop it but they zoom in on his face while Kuiper's saying what an idiot he is and it's kind of great because it's like oh god why I mean I have to do it for this money but you guys made this show just to make fun of me I get it I don't even know who this guy is. That's what he was thinking. <laughs> Big uh, the NFL owners meeting happened. Where did the NFL's owner meeting even take place at? Every year, the NFL owners, the owners meeting, they go out there and they have breakfast and golf and rich, and then they come out and they nothing happens. The big news was players can wear number zero this year. Great. Oh, also, everyone's playing a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday game. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> We're going to flex out Thursdays, maybe. Fans, who gives a sh They He literally openly said it. Uh, got, uh, Goodell. Hey, what about fans? We have tickets for Sunday, and all of a sudden you're going to tell them the th game's on Thursday? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. What about the $9 billion P dollars Amazon gave us? That's what Gottlieb, like, I mean, Gottlieb. Goodell responded with. He's like, yeah, who cares? It's TV that matters. But Players can wear number zero, so that's fun, right? Calvin Ridley, zero for his uh, DraftKings account. Breaking news, zero. Players can wear zero. Exciting. How exciting is that? The owner's meeting. Nothing ever happens. There, were, there was a, they couldn't even outlaw a quarterback sneak. The yeah, the owner's meeting. <laughs> Oh, man. What happens there? It's just breakfasts and dinners and golf. All right. Let's lock this in. Let's get in here. Let's get, ooh, we're into the box. I have my Cracker Barrel hat. I wonder if we should take this off. Yeah. Like I said before, the Cracker Barrel hat, I didn't realize how problematic it is until I go out in the world with it. It's, it's an aggressive hat, I've been told. I don't lean, I mean, I don't lean right politically, uh, but I do with my breakfast. I've said that before. 
the the you go to a you go to a nice racist diner, you're getting a good breakfast. You, you I mean, you go to they sell rocking chairs on the front porch. They're gonna have good biscuits. You go to a diner out in this co beautiful country of America. You got prices right on the TV. You got three or Fox News and three three old men reading a newspaper. Yeah, that's gonna be a good breakfast. I don't want no fucking libtard avocado toast. I want some grits and I want some <laughs> anti. I want the anti-abortion omelet, please. Whites only, of course. Uh, we call them egg whites, sir. Whites only. Just kidding. Now I'm just talking about the. But I do like the hat. I like the. I like the cracker barrel hat. It's just a fucking hat. Anyway. I am the man in the box talking, uh, <laughs> talking cracker, bro. I should not. I don't have much to talk about with the man in the box. I, that Doug Gottlieb thing got me so excited. I did laundry this morning. Going back on the road again tomorrow. I just came back from Pittsburgh. I will be in Springfield, Missouri this weekend. So, unfortunately, I will not be able to get the watch party of the Final Four this weekend. I will, I'll try to catch it online. Although that seems good. Make sure you check that out. Anyway, I had to do laundry today. I still have a lot more to do. I'm taking it in shifts. You still have to do self-laundry. I don't have a unit into the building. I have to go down the hall, quarters, the whole thing. I think I come closest to death on laundry day. I let it pile up, pile up. Then you do machine. It's, it's so labor intensive. Now, granted, laundry isn't the way it used to be, but I, I argue that it was better back then when it was hard, when it would take like a week to wash your clothes, you know, you had to really grind it and fizz. I think the washing machine itself, the laundry machine, the invention of it, the mechanical engine, electrical washing machine has done worse, not improved our lives and uh, made it much harder on ourselves. Yeah. I mean, yes, the physical, it's still, it's still physical labor doing laundry, moving to getting the clothes in there. Getting in, yeah, you're not grinding and putting on a board and hanging it up and doing all that shit. But I compare it to the, uh, the cotton gin, Eli Whitney inventing the cotton gin where uh, cotton as a business, it was pretty much done with. And then, uh, you know, the cotton gin got invented and it made it more efficient where it was instead of becoming a dying business. Well, you can, and then slavery kicked back. They used slavery again. And then, uh, it, it made, and obviously like, Oh, thanks. Slaves like, thanks. Thanks, Eli. We were out of this. This wasn't making any fucking money to you. Oh, great. We can do this all day. And they can, and our master can make more money. Well, I got a lot of race in this episode. Um, <laughs> I guess I should probably throw this down. Uh, but anyway, it, it's a bad thing. The cotton gin was a bad thing. As I'm trying to say, and so was laundry machines. So yeah, it used to take a week to wash it, but you would we the thing was we were all happy, or at least we tolerated dirty clothes. Now everything has to be washed all the fucking time. You know, because a suit, a wool suit would take you to grind it in there, you know, you wash it once, and that was it for like a month, two months. Now you always have the laundry, and that's the other thing with laundry, it's never done. It's ne it's never not done. You always are in you, what you're wearing now has to be is the furthest thing from laundry, but it's still laundry. This has to be washed eventually. The shirt, I mean, it will be, but like laundry never stops. And I'm saying back in the day before these machines were invented, yeah, you you repaired it, you ripped it. <laughs> Clothes used to be repaired. That's how rough they were. <laughs> Wool suits and ash. Uh, so I'm saying, I don't like laundry, obviously. Uh, but it just doesn't fucking stop it. It doesn't, it didn't help that in the machines in our building. Nine, like there's three on each floor, five floors, four floors of residence. And like eight of the 12 are out of commission. They're always out of commission in the core. Fuck, fuck the buildings where they got to charge quarters to it. It's outrageous. Rent's not enough too. I have to go find quarters. I have to go to like pawn shops. And I, what, what, I have to go to an arcade to find quarters at. And after COVID, they don't, they don't give you rolls anymore. At Ralph's that's for sure. And if they do, they go underneath the red, they underneath the register. They pull up the coin tray and they act like they're, they act like you're doing a drug deal, buying a roll of quarters. 
can't believe I have to go to the bank to buy rolls of quarters. I guess it's more a complaint about my life than laundry itself. Now that I say this out loud. Um, anyway, my point is, I don't know if I had a point, but the laundry machine, the modern laundry machine is one of the worst inventions of our man of mankind. Let's go back. Let's start normalizing having dirty clothes and not having to wash clothes. All the time. I'm not saying filthy fucking clothes, but being able to wear something, you know, twice a month, three times, something, whatever. Let's allow it. The clothesline. There's nothing. The, the, the hang dry is always the thing that I had to do. As a bigger man, you didn't want things to shrink. So anytime you put anything in the dryer... You're really rolling the dice of a shirt not fitting and being a tight squeeze. That was fun when you go to dorm rooms and <laughs> football players, all shirts are on over every every chair, just soaking wet, soaking wet shirts hanging. Oh, well, anyway, that's me. I do. I almost die on laundry day. It's the hardest physical labor. I feel like a goddamn Amish Dutch pilgrim. Anyway, let's recap the bombs real quick. Uh, That's going to do it for today's show. The final four bombs. We got San Diego State minus two under 131 for that game. We got UConn. Uh, we got Miami plus five and a half. I'm sorry. See, I want to say UConn because there's... And one of the reasons why just because there's so... I mean, UConn's such the obvious team that Sometimes they don't always cover. So we'll take Miami plus five and a half and over 149. I put my, that might be my favorite play of the four, over 149. And UAB minus one and a half in the NIT championship game five. That's five bombs. Detonate them. But you know me. Like I said, a very racial show today, but that's my uh, that's my purpose here. Because I mean, I'm just here to bring diversity to this set here. Give the kind of white man's perspective on things. Sure. Point guard position. <laughs> point guard position no anyway um so like and subscribe the youtube page if you're watching it right now please on youtube and if you're listening to the podcast make sure you listen to the bottom line bombs on uh, you can do it on soundcloud spotify itunes wherever pods are told um also have the blackout diaries i do with sean flannery you can find that on, on all the other outlets too so it's a fun drinking story show podcast subscribe to that um xfl gambling podcast I do with Colby D and J Mark. Make sure you subscribe to that as well. Uh, only a couple more weeks that are left. Well, a couple more weeks. And then the playoffs. It's getting good. XFL is getting good. Um, yeah, like I said, and I'll be in Springfield, Missouri this weekend. Chicago, the week after that, I believe. Yeah, Chicago, the week after that at the improv as well. Um, all right, guys. Thank you. And don't forget, I am. Let me just. Let me just let's damn Marino. Dan Marino and his uh, really dynamic wife. <laughs> sound bites. I mean, as funny as, as morning zoos as, as it sounds, the sound bites, they're fucking hilarious. I mean, they're hilarious. I get why people do it. It's the best. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. Uh, good luck with all the, and that's it for the amateur basketball. Oh.